Okay. So today we will be talking about, let me open my, sorry. Finally, yeah. So uh, today we will be talking about uh, artificial intelligence. Some of these slides are uh, from your textbook directly. Uh, some of them I, I found some material from, from online sources. And none of them are actually mine. I just copied them from somewhere. Uh, so don't don't I don't want to take any credit for the images, but I don't know where I got them. Sorry. Uh, so this is what, I, what we are going to do. My name is Yusuf Sinan Akgül and I am a, a, a faculty member at this department. And we will do this a short introduction to artificial intelligence. OK, everything is fine. Right? So the usually when you start talking about something, just you try to make a you try to make a definition of it. And uh, what is artificial intelligence? Um, unfortunately, we don't have a perfect answer for this one. Uh, uh, for many fields of the science, for many fields of the engineering, you can define yourself with very definitive sentences, like we are this and this and we are not that and that. And uh, for the AI, uh, we don't have very good definition of it. And this definition changes over the time. And in fact, many people working in the field of AI, they don't like the name of artificial intelligence. OK, uh, what is artificial about our intelligence? What is natural intelligence? I mean, these kind of questions are difficult questions to answer. Uh, mostly nowadays people, I mean, if they say that, OK, AI is this term is invented in in 19, 1956, something like that. OK, very old term. So nowadays, if 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 they say that if I am deciding the name today, maybe it, it would have been computational intelligence instead of artificial intelligence, because there is some intelligence and there is some uh, uh, computation going on. Let's call this computational intelligence, etc. But the name is there and we are we are using it. OK, uh, maybe for Turkish it could be hesaplamalı akıl. Yeah, it's up uh, Zika. Would that be a better term? But uh, anyway, so any ideas about if you like to define artificial intelligence, how would you define it in a sentence? OK, there is a high school student or maybe the primary school student. They are asking you what is artificial intelligence and you are answering them. How would you define it? One or two sentences. Yes. A machine that can learn how to solve a problem. A machine that can learn how to solve a problem. Yeah, that's 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 a nice definition of some part of artificial intelligence. Maybe, I mean, yeah, learning is learning is something that we like in an artificial intelligence system. But there are many artificial intelligence systems that don't know how to learn, but still they are. They are they are behaving like intelligent, right? Could you guys put up your face masks? Face masks. So that 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 was a good approach. Learning is one of the fundamentals of okay artificial intelligence, but it is not all. Okay, some people, some people, some people. OK, they say that, OK, we don't know how the artificial intelligence work, but maybe uh, we can we can do it like this. OK, it was it was idea in 1950s. This guy, his name is Turing, Alan Turing. OK, uh, he's a British mathematician and computer scientist. OK, he died very uh, early, young, young age, 1950. OK, 54. He is the one that led uh, the team uh, that uh, uh, solved this German secret code of messaging, deciphering the German Enigma code in World War II. So some people say that 
uh, this guy is the one who won the war for the British. Uh, uh, some people don't agree, but well, I mean, his name is there. So he's one of the uh, the the first big names of, of computer science, and the first computer program belongs to him. He says things like, "What is computable and not computable?" Okay, but given a problem, is this a computable problem or not computable problem? Uh, he can he can uh, say that. Okay, uh, he has those, and he says that. I don't know what artificial intelligence is, but if if a system says that it is smart, then we can test that system like this. Take a person, real person, this guy, C, okay? And C sits in a room with a terminal, a computer terminal, and he doesn't see anything uh, other than the terminal. At the other side of the terminal, okay, there is a person or a computer. And it is the task of this person to determine at the other side you have a person or a computer, okay? If I can, if a computer can fool this person for maybe 10 minutes, and this person cannot determine if it's a computer or a person, then we can say that this system is an intelligent system. For example, this one is asking questions like, okay, uh, uh, who is the president of United States? And this one is asking, giving me a, a, a answer back. This one says that it is uh, Joe Biden. Okay, that's an maybe easy question. How about how about this one? Uh, how about another question? How do you feel today? So this one should okay. It is trying to disguise itself as like a person, right? It says I am feeling fine. Well, you know, today it is uh, uh, it is the wind is from the southerly wind, Lodos, and it is making it is giving me some headaches, etc. So. It is trying to fool this person into thinking that it's a computer. So he says that the Turing says that if a computer system can pass this test, at least it can survive for 10 minutes. OK, we can call this system. We can call this system. Uh, an intelligent system. Yeah, question. Why should we accept that definition? What? Why should we accept that definition? I didn't say that, right? Did I say that? So what is wrong with this? What? So I was I was going to ask you. I mean, what is wrong with this? What is wrong with this picture? I was going to ask you, and then you are telling me that you don't like it. So what do you like? What what don't you like about, about this picture? Um, I think that it is very high standard for a computer, and I don't really see any reason for us to accept that definition. Well, you don't have to accept anything. I mean, okay, but in, the, in this in this department, whatever I tell you, I just read them from a book and you don't have to accept it. OK, so I am not I'm not going to tell you you accept this one. We just we teach the stuff and I ask you stuff about what did I teach you about this one and this one and you answer it. I'm, I'm not asking anything about the truth because I don't know the truth. Nobody knows about okay, it. Let me ask you that way. Right? What is Turing's justification for the this definition. He said that any artificially intelligent system should behave like a human. OK, so what is wrong with this approach? You, you just tell me. This approach is not accepted anymore. OK, in the beginning in 1990s, people said that, well, this is not a good definition of artificial intelligence. And why? What? No, no, it's not. No, no, no. Well, Nowadays, there are systems that can survive maybe 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, you want 30 minutes. You want uh, you want you want you want to know that the other side is a computer or a human. Yeah, that can survive. It is not that hard anymore. No, no, it is not. I mean, I, I, I the, they are con they are still continuing this contest Turing test, not in a scientific way, but it's just good for maybe for fun, more with some other stuff. OK, there are. Uh, this is the question to the computer. How? How is you? What would you say is if you are a human to this question to the question? How is you? 
As a computer, what would you say? I couldn't pass this sentence, so I am crashing. Uh, there's a grammatical error. What would you say? If I if I tell you, how is you? What would you say? I'm asking you. You wouldn't say this, right? I am asking you, how is you? What would you say? I am fine. You would say, I am fine? I don't think so. When somebody says, how is you? Maybe I am trying to make fun of you. Maybe I am trying to stress something out. The computer's, computer's answer is this, okay? How is grammars? Okay, that, that's, the, that's the answer that we get from this computer. So, because if I, if you say I am fine, then that's probably a computer because they, it, it understood the grammatical mistake, it fixed it and it is giving me a straight answer. I mean, nobody would ask, and nobody, any native speakers of English, would ask you this question, right? So I maybe I I I I I am trying to tell you something. I am intending a pun or something like that. Right? So maybe joking. So I am joking you back. Okay. So these kind of these kind of um, answers are common, but still, this is not a good test. It is not because it is so hard. It is because what? You are going to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 are sitting in front row, and uh, uh, that means that you are going to say something. So what is wrong with this picture? No, that's not the answer now. This is not the answer now. Just say something. I mean, this is not a good picture, other than the hard. Maybe you can say that just because you can trick people. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, who, was, who told you that humans are intelligent? Right? Well, they are kind of intelligent, but most of the time, they don't think like intelligent, right? And if you, uh, but let's, let's think about this, okay? How many people are using the, the emergency lane when you drive on E5? Half of them on the emergency, way, emergency lane. Is that an intelligent behavior? No. What no. happens in the stadiums? 30,000 people get into one stadium, okay? And they say not so nice things about the referee in, in one month, right? I don't think that that's an intelligent behavior. There are even people who are supposed to be intelligent. They say that I am opposed to vaccination. Well, this is, this is happening. I mean, uh, and what is the average uh, uh, TV watch time in Turkey nowadays? Six hours, eight hours? Eight hours a day, this this country is watching TV. That's, that's how they are spending their time. Is this a rational behavior? No. Is this a smart behavior? I don't think so. So what are we going to do by producing this behavior? I mean... Are we going to be like those humans? No. So uh, another question. Here is a question for you. Somebody asked computer this one. What is square root of 7,218? Okay, what would you say? If I ask you this question as a human, what would you say? What? I can't answer. Maybe I do so say, or I, you would wait maybe three minutes and you give the wrong answer, right? <laughs> That's what the computer is doing. That's what the computer should do to fool the other side, right? This is not intelligence. This is human mimicking, right? Human mimicking is not mean, it does not mean intelligence. So again, that, that definition of behave like humans, okay, is not a very good definition because we have to model the humans we have to think like them, we have to talk like them, and etc. whatever their irrationalities are, and etc. So Turing test, we don't do this Turing test anymore. Instead, we, instead of defining AI that way, there are many other ways of, we don't define AI that way. We talk about AI, we say that it, ha it has to learn something, okay? Things like this. Okay. It involves learning. It involves adapting to circumstances. Okay, you don't repeat the same thing that you that you that you memorized. If the circumstances change, you change your behavior. 
adaptation learning, okay? And it is used for uh, AI, okay? It is used for problems that are difficult to solve. Problems are difficult, but we don't have the perfect solution, okay? For example, if I, if I, if I write this to Google uh, search uh, window, okay? Um, uh, which one is the safest uh, place to live? What part of Istanbul is safe, safest? Or maybe not safest. Maybe what part of the Istanbul is the nicest place to live? Okay. If I ask this to, to the Google, well, there is no one way of measuring how good the results are, right? I mean, for some people, this part is better because it is safe. So for some people, the other part is better because it is cheaper. Some people say that I, I find this one and this one and this one. Depends on lots of criteria and the criteria is not right if it is not measured. So you can only give suggestion. You say that, okay, this part is good, this is good, and this is good. You choose one of them and nobody would blame you that you I have chosen this part because it changes depending on the situation and etc. Or some other some other maybe an example. I have I am running an airline. I have 400 airplanes. OK. I have 2500 personnel. OK. And I am flying to. Maybe 500 airports. OK. Tell me how many times I should fly to one of these airports per week and tell me which person should go to what airplane and tell me, I mean, these are not the same airplanes all the time. Tell me what kind of airplane I should use on some of the specific roads, OK? So if I can find the optimal solution to this one, it will be perfect. But finding optimal solution for this one is very, very expensive. And it is not achievable in our, in our lifetime. So AI definitely will help you there, but it is not going to find the perfect solution, OK? It's going to find you a good enough solution so that you can compete with the other airline uh, companies, OK? So it works most of the time, and sometimes the things are wrong. Sometimes you get very bad results from the Google search, right? You don't understand what's going on. Sometimes you type something to Google Translate, and most of the time you get very nice sentences back, but sometimes it is all crap. So what are you going to do? So AI is something like that. It's not like calculator. Calculator is not an AI system, OK? You say 2 plus 2, it is always 4, OK? There is no, there is nothing, uh, there is nothing that can, roll with, get, get, can go wrong with that addition and that kind of stuff. So, OK, so when you define AI, we don't give like one, one or two sentences, nice sentences. We start doing this kind of stuff. We start saying that, OK, it is like this. There is no fixed rule. You can say that if this happens, then do this. If that happens, then do this. It is not, it doesn't work that way. It's not going to work all the time. It will work most of the time. If it is difficult for human, then uh, it can be considered an AI problem. But you don't say that. You don't say that. If your result is the same as the human results, then that's the correct thing. No, we don't say that anymore. OK, we gave up that idea in 1990s. Let's look at some other AI people. So this is the guy who realized that if you have the computers, they, they can behave intelligently like humans. We can do that. He said that. OK, but before that, Computers has to work and they have to uh, run some algorithms and algorithm is invented by this guy, Harazmi. He died in uh, 850, okay. And I I thought I translated them to English, but well, you understand that. So he's a mathematician from Baghdad and he invented algebra, he invented algorithms and yeah. So is there? So I translated that, but I forgot to erase this part. So what have them are there? Okay. So what did he say? He said that to solve some problems, you need a language. So he invented this uh, algebra. That's why uh, it's called algebra because it is his name. 
So he invented the algebra, and after inventing the algebra, he started doing things like this. Okay. This is directly his proof. Okay. How would you solve such a problem? He is not giving you the direct answer. He's giving you an algorithm. He says that if you have such a problem, then the, that means this. You are multiplying x with x. That's the x square. Then 10x is here. Okay. Remember this is x, right? This is x. So this is x. This is 10, right? So if I divide this 10x into 2, 5x is here. Remember this is x. And 5x is here. So x squared plus 5x and plus 5x is 39. I know that, right? To make this a perfect square, I just do this. If I do this, I know that this is 5 and this is 5. And if I add 39 with 25, I will get 64. What does that mean? X plus 5 times X plus 5 is 64. Well, in that case, X would be 3. Okay. So I am not giving you any, like, direct answer to your question. Like, I didn't have any formula for the uh, quadratic formula, and etc. They didn't have it. This guy is giving you a number of steps. You start with this and you take it and you do this. And that's that's the typical algorithm. You you know what uh, what algorithm is, right? That's the typical algorithm. He invented what algorithm is and he he defined uh, lots of algorithms for different types of uh, different different types of uh, problems. And one of them was this. And later they realized that this kind of notation could be used for solution of the problems like that one. That's what we call algebra, right? Later, they can extend it this algebra to differential algebra, linear algebra, and etc., or logic algebra, etc. Okay, good. Somebody came up with this thing, okay? In 19, in 1700s, this guy said that I I made this machine, okay? It's called it's called Mechanical Turk, okay? It's like a robot. It plays chess, the play, the 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 game of chess, satranch, okay, and it was not a very good player, but it is not bad either, okay. So it can it can beat it can beat persons uh, that are not at the uh, grandmaster levels, okay, but it worked, okay. Nobody would understand how it works, and in fact, I have a I have a video there. Where is my video? Yeah, chess. I will have to. You don't. You don't hear my sound, right? If I turn this on. If I turn this on. If I turn this on. What am I gonna do? I need to turn this on. Can bize ses gelmiyor. Now, if you if you do that, okay, maybe I should. You should uh, turn turn turn, turn on my. Turn off your mic and turn on your last speaker. My mic is already turned off. I never turned it on. I turned it on now. Okay. How about now? Do you do you guys hear me? Do you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. You can. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Why don't you turn off the, your microphone?
everything. Okay, now. How about now? Do you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. yes, we are. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, you hear me, right? Do you hear the sound from the movie? Do you hear the, the movie sound? No. Okay, so look it up from YouTube, okay? His name is Chesra Bhatt the Turk. Watch it from there while I am weaving it in, 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 in my local copy. And in fact, I am not going to, okay. I'm not going to take much time. So this guy is doing this, okay? So he, sh he shows all of the machine, it, it opens the doors and everything. There is there is nothing unusual going on in there, just uh, this gears and the machinery, etc. Uh, he said that I am not hiding anything. And, um, uh, and then uh, you go on and you play chess with this guy. Please, please, please. So they, they, he, he used the, he, he played with the uh, celebrities like the, uh, the, the kings and the queens and etc. So most of them he, 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 he was able to win, I guess. Not. Yeah. And if you if you make a if you make a if you try to cheat, and if he sees you cheating like stealing one of the pieces and etc., uh, he would get angry and he would just uh, leave the room or he would just say, hey, "I'm done. I'm not playing with you," etc. So how how did it work? They say that they they never know how it worked. Actually, they say that uh, there was a guy inside the box. This was a soldier, he lost his legs, both of them, but he was maybe a 45 kilogram guy. Once he lost his legs, he became like 20, 20 kilogram guy now. So he can fit into a very small uh, uh, a compartment inside this machine. That's what, that's what they are saying. So they usually, they usually associate, okay, intelligence with chess. When you say if something is intelligent, then, then that thing should be playing chess very well, right? That's what that's what they are. That's what they say. That's why the first day they invented the computers. The first day they say that the computers can behave in, uh, 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 intelligently. They started playing with this idea, and even uh, Alan Turing he, he said that I'm going to play chess with this machine. Okay, that's why it is very. It's a very classical procedure to look at the games okay uh, like this one i think i got this from your textbook a simple board game is called eight piece puzzle eight puzzle do you know how to play this game <clears throat> each of these pieces can move for example the six can move uh, up and down eight can move left and right once eight moves five can move up and down you know that, right? You're supposed to, if the board is shuffled, okay, if the order is not, you're supposed to put all the keys into, into the correct order, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the, that's the game, okay? So board game, and if you are doing it either very quickly, then you are a smart guy. That's what they tell you, right? If you don't, if you take days to solve it, then you are not very bright, maybe. Uh, that's what we have learned. So. Let's try to find an algorithm to play this game. That's what we are going to do, okay? If this is the board, beginning of the board, okay? One, three, five, four, two, seven, eight, six. 
and we are supposed to make it like two, <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So how would you start? What would you do? You have three options only. Maybe move five downwards, left, uh, two, up six. Which one? Left downwards. Why? Why? Yeah. So you are you are kind of you are trying to five downwards and push three here and two up and etc. Right. So, but you don't know the exact solution actually. If I start like this, I'm getting closer to the solution. That's the origin intuition is right. So, I mean, that's our kind of humans behave that way. We don't know the exact solution, but we kind of guess which direction to go. Okay. Uh, she is using that intuition, but in computers, we prefer seeing the final result at the beginning. That's what we do. Okay. If we say that there are three options, then I do this. Okay. These are my three options. Where are my options? Okay. Let me take this out. These are my three options. One of them is this. Obviously, I moved six up. And this one is I moved to to the right. And this one I moved five down. And then each one has, okay, this one has only one option left. Goes that way. This one has three more. This guy has one. So on the average, maybe there will be three options. Sometimes it is four, sometimes it is two, sometimes it is one, right? So there are three options at each stage. Okay, so if I continue doing this, okay, this is called a search tree. Search tree, a data structure that you're going to learn in your second year in this department. Okay, using such a search tree, I can produce these hypothetical uh, board configurations. And I do this until I hit the target, which is this one. OK. So what should I do then? Maybe I should do this first. Why can't I get to the OK? Now they're there. OK, first do this, then do this, 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 and this. How many moves? One, two, three, four, five. It is guaranteed that you are going to solve this uh, board in five moves. And nobody can do it better than five moves. Why? Nobody can do it better than five moves. Why? Everything, yeah? Uh, th these are all the things that can be done in one move, right? Well, none of them is a solution. These are the things that can be done in just two moves, and they, they not, none of them are a solution. Okay, one, two, three, four, and fifth. You can do at most. I mean, the, 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 you can be as good as five, but no less than five. OK, so. I mean, the, the a game that I can a game that I can associate with intelligence now uh, can be played with such an algorithm. OK, and it looks like intelligent for me because it is solving it very nice. OK can be uh, solved with the simple algorithm as long as you have you have the time and memory to 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 get all these configurations and to make the search okay uh, it looks like well easy solution but the thing is well the branch this is called branching factor okay three three two so if the branching factor is three if i am doing this five moves what does that mean it is three times three times three times like three to the power five maybe not that not that a big number okay so at the bottom of this three i have three to the power five okay three to the power five configurations i have to check each of them maybe it is not that uh, difficult but if the branching factor is you know what the branching factor is for chess what is the branching factor for chess Just take a guess. You know chess, right? Let me show you the OK. Here is chess. At the beginning, how many uh, possibilities are there? 
one, two, eight is the uh, your eight is here, right? Eight is there. So uh, 16, 32 and the 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 nights. So it is around. So average branching factor for chess is 35. There are 35 possibilities at every move. OK, and how many moves are there in a typical chess game? Around 20, 30. The number of possible really That's the average, OK? 35 is the average. Average possibilities at each. Yeah. 35 is the average. Average branching factor for the game of chess. That's the average, OK? At the beginning, how many, how many uh, moves are there? 16. And for the just for the two knights, it is 18. But when you get to the end of the game, OK, the number of possibilities increases. But uh, if you take the average of all of them for all the games played, you get 35. The branching factor is average branching factor is 35. So 35 here, 35 there and 35. Very so how many moves are there in a chase chess game? Typical chase game. 20 moves, 25 moves, 30 moves maybe. So what does that mean? 35 to the power 30. OK, that's a very big number. There are no computers in this world. OK, that can hold that kind of memory. There are no computers in this world. OK, that can make a search on this kind of a space. So chess game for now is not solvable with our current computers, OK? Without current computers. It looks like we are going to need 300 years or something like that of uh, 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 computer development to solve this game in a reasonable amount of time, OK? So this algorithm doesn't work very well if there are other types of games that you are playing, OK? That doesn't mean that the computers can't beat the humans. Why? Because humans cannot deal with this kind of uh, search tree anyway. So there are some nice algorithms that can make a decision without making a search in all the space, OK? And computers nowadays are doing much better than humans. OK, that's, 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 that's the thing. So we play with this kind of simple games, uh, tic-tac-toe. They are very simple, but so we play them uh, uh, with the computers, and computers are very good at them. But even even as a as a as a human, I can see the end of the game here, right? If I do that and that and that, we know that there is no winning side for this game, right? We we can we all we all we all know that. So so the game thing is something that we always thought that if we can play games smartly. We can we can we can do anything that we like. Well, it is partially true because uh, you know this company DeepMind. DeepMind. They are the ones. They are the ones who play the Atari games. And an unsupervised game, yeah, unsupervised way. You know you know the Atari games, right? Atari games, video games of uh, 1980s. Uh, in an unsupervised way, they play this game, OK, without learning anything, OK, without knowing anything. They just play the game left, right and shoot and etc. And by checking the score, they learned it. They learned the game uh, uh, by itself. And at the end of the day or week, uh, uh, they were the best game players uh, of the whole planet. OK, they were playing much better than the humans. They were playing much better than the other types of automated machines and etc. So these guys using this technology, uh, I think the the game of Go, you know the game of Go, Chinese checkers, game of Go. It is more complicated than chess. Okay, uh, I think the the computers uh, computers uh, won their first chess championship around 2000 year 2000. And until two years ago, no computers, uh, no computer were able to beat the humans at this game of Go. 
that that company, this deep mind, they developed a deep learning based system to beat the humans. Nowadays, I think there are no board games that the computers are not the champions. OK, computers are always the champions at every board game, including the poker that involves the chance. OK, remember with the game of chances like the uh, uh, like the black uh, uh, backgammon and the poker and that kind of stuff. Computers are always uh, better than better than humans. OK, still we are not saying that computers are smarter than humans because computational intelligence is a little bit different than uh, a little bit different than human intelligence. We we, we behave them, we treat them differently. OK, any questions up to now? Any questions? You have a question? OK, if you if you don't have a question, maybe I can continue and let's look at some of the let's look at some of the uh, artificial intelligence technique. One of them is machine learning. OK, so the, I'm sure you have you have heard this the term of machine learning. Yes. Can we know that? Well, I mean, defining intelligence is a little bit difficult. Defining intuition is much more difficult than what is intuition. No, not all of the problems are algorithmic, and computers can solve that problem. The problem is not algorithmic problem. Uh, computers cannot solve it. Well, and that the computer that solve that kind of problem. The theory of computation says that if a problem is solvable then there is an algorithm to solve it. OK, so you are saying that don't do this kind of solution. Don't give me this kind of solution like based on the search. Use some kind of a intuition. Well, we have systems that called heuristic systems. Heuristic systems, OK, sezgisel sistemler in Turkish, heuristic systems. They use those kind of things that we call the intuition. They say that, for example, how do you play chess? How, what was your strategy to play the uh, eight game puzzles? You said that I'm trying to move that uh, the number five pa uh, piece to its final position, something like that. So this is kind of intuition. So there are systems that use those kind of heuristics. They say that, OK, how do you play the chess? They asked Karparov, he said that I try to keep these four cells under my control. That's important. OK, and the second thing is. Whatever you do, don't don't lose your queen. OK, queen is important. OK. Always you always queen is important. Uh, keep your queen in a safe place, etc. But there are no guarantees that these kind of heuristics will work. OK, there is no theoretical proof that sometimes they will fail and they will fail very bad. And if somebody asks you, why did you fail? You are going to say, well, I was following the heuristic. Then maybe that heuristic is wrong, but sometimes it's wrong, sometimes it is not. OK, so we don't try to solve the things using the heuristics much. If we don't have any other way of solving stuff, yes, maybe, but we are after these kind of solutions. Look for the end, look for the target. For example, I heard that uh, we cannot develop an algorithm that solves the the shortest version of the given Boolean function. Uh, you know, P and Q, maybe I, may I? Uh, if you iterate, if you look for all the possibilities, yes, you can. Uh, but it's not an algorithm. Well, it is an algorithm. I mean, I'm, I am iterating over all the possibilities of the solutions, one by one, and if I have 10 to the power 200 of them. And if I have time, billions of billions of years, then I solve them. That's an algorithm. And an algorithm that is running infinitely long doesn't make it an uh, not algorithmic. It's still an algorithm, but it is not a it is not a realizable algorithm, maybe. Yes, but for example, in this problem, intuition is uh, very useful. Uh, I'm trying to say that can we develop a product? Computer that solved. Your intuition will not find the optimal solution in this case. Okay, because without looking at all the alternatives, 
you will never know that uh, there is no better solution than my solution, right? Your institution is going to give you kind of an okay solution, okay? Good enough. That's how we do our things in the real world, actually, as humans. We say that, it, is it good enough? Yeah, it is good enough, then, then we can do it, okay? When I try to walk from this building to the building uh, uh, of the, uh, of the, for example, mechanical engineering department, I try to use the shortest path, right? I, I use that path and go under the bridge and etc. That's that's good enough for me because I am trying to save energy, right? Humans try to save, mammals try to save energy. But if I if I just instead of walking on the right side of the sidewalk, sometimes for some reason I walk on the left side of the sidewalk. That that makes my path not optimal, but that's good enough for me. Okay, because I am trying to solve two things at the same time. While I'm walking there, I am trying to avoid those water puddles in the at the ground and etc. Right. So trying to solve many things. And I will never argue that I, I came to the mechanical engineering department in the optimal path. I said that, I mean, this was a good enough solution. That's how we work as human beings. We, we never say that I am the optimal. Nobody can walk to the mechanical engineering department better than I am, okay? Uh, we don't do that. So good enough solutions are usually possible with the intuitive solutions like that, but perfect solutions, no, you have to check every possibilities. Yes. Uh, win against humans in poker, but that game includes bluffing. How do computers do that? Well, again, that's uh, uh, that, well. Chance doesn't mean that chance doesn't mean it is all random. Okay, if your game is just drawing dice, zaratiyosun, and if your game is draw, throwing dice and who throws a bigger number wins, then of course there is no strategy in it. Okay. But if your game includes decisions after the factor of chance, then there is definitely an intelligence. Okay. There's emotions in between. Poker includes emotions, like if you have a good hand, you should show me. Well, yeah, I mean, that person, you know that person, right? If you watch that person, if you study his uh, history of playing poker, okay, how many times he bluffed? How many times he didn't? Under what circumstances he bluffed? We have a statistics of it, right? Given the current situation, what is the probability that he is bluffing? If I can guess this, 60% of the time, you are going to beat that guy, okay, uh, uh, six out of 10. Six out of 10 is good enough for you to win his all of his money, okay? So, these kind of games, okay, the games that, that's based on the chance, they, it requires intelligence. You cannot win those kind of games. Maybe you can win it one or two times, but if you play it 100 times, definitely the better one, uh, the one who is more intelligent will, will win the, will win the uh, game. Doesn't matter. Uh, unless that game is purely, that, that game is purely uh, random. Okay, good. Those are good questions. Any other questions? So game playing is just one thing. That there are other, there are other many stuff. For example, a decision tree algorithm, machine learning stuff. This is what I do. I measure the temperature, wind speed, uh, pressure around this Gebze region every day. And I also cap how many, uh, 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 at what day it rained or not, okay? I kept that information. Temperature, humidity, pressure, and rain, no rain. If it is 20 degrees, humidity is 30%, pressure is 10.7, uh, then it rained. 25 degrees, 0%, and pressure is this, then no rain. 400 days. I kept this information, this is machine learning. So I learned when it's going to rain, rain and when it's not going to rain, this is called machine learning again. And decision trees are a way of learning this stuff. Come up with a tree like that. If temperature is higher than 70 Fahrenheit, okay. If wind is large, is 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 faster than two miles per hour, then it's not going to rain. 
That's what my experience tell me, okay? Again, look at the face of that person. If it is kind of nervous, and if his hand is such and such, and if my hand is such and such, then he's bluffing. It's a decision decision tree. I am not saying that I can do, I can guess if it's going to rain or not 100%. Maybe if I can do this 90% of the time, good enough. What was the definition of uh, AI? It doesn't work all the time, but it works most of the time. And I have theoretical basis for that, okay? So decision trees is one way of achieving this. The other one is, okay, using uh, artificial artificial uh, neuron uh, cells, okay? This is a natural cell in human brain. There are 100 billion in our heads, okay? This is how, these are the accents. These are kind of the outputs. And these are kind of the inputs. So this cell takes input from the other cells outputs. And after doing some very simple processing on this inputs, by the way, these inputs are electrical signals and it produces some output. And this output is used by some other cells. OK, so at the beginning, where, where do you think these, these at the beginning? OK, where do you think that these cells are connected to? I mean, you cannot have cells all the time, right? I have to end it somewhere. Oh. Well, what do you mean? Like, yeah. At the, at the base side of your eye, you have nerves that are sensitive to the light, okay? So in our ears, there are some nerves that are sensitive to vibrations. Uh, and here, I have some nerves that are sensitive to touch, etc. So what are the outputs are connected to? at the end to our muscles, right? Our arm muscle, our tongue muscle, and our uh, chin muscle and etc. okay? And most of the time, these cells modify their behavior depending on what you have observed. And the observation starts the, the, the first day you were born. No, no, observation starts uh, way before you were born, right? Okay, people learn in their uh, mother's belly OK, they, they start learning stuff and they, they continue learning until they die. OK, they change their behaviors. So why don't we do the same thing with the computer? So they invented this. First, they had to kill a number of cats to do the experiments. This is what they do. They they take a cat because it's a mammal. OK, they took the they took the cap of the top part of the cat out. So the brain is exposed now. They put a they put an electrode inside the brain of the uh, cat. Okay, they show this kind of pictures to cat. Okay, whenever there is a response to this kind of a picture, they get a new electrical signal. So they knew that that cell is used for detecting these kind of slanted lines. Okay, so the later they did this this kind of experiment, and they found one cell. They call it grandma cell grandma, grandmother cell, okay? That person's cell is responsible for recognizing his grandmother's face, okay? Whenever that person sees his grandmother, that cell is activated and they can measure it, okay? So we kind of model how the human brain works, at least partially, and do the same thing with this kind of structure. So I have a data structure here. It takes three inputs with the values temperature, humidity, and wind speed. And this is going to say rain or no rain. But this is very simple. Maybe I should do this way. These are my inputs, some cells, some other cells, okay? This can do more complicated stuff, or I can do this kind of a stuff. Get the image from the road, 30 by 32 image of the road, feed it into this kind of a network, and this network output is OK, if I light this up, it means sh sharp turn to the left, sharp turn to the right and straight. OK, so this can this network can be used as an autonomous vehicle. OK, very simplified, but it can be used there. And if I keep adding many, many layers there, then it's called deep learning. OK, so nowadays this is the most popular uh, machine learning method, most popular artificial intelligence method. And all the things that you are hearing on the news, 
people are talking about autonomous vehicles, people are talking about autonomous uh, flying machines and etc. Translators and uh, deep fake etc. Deep learning is responsible for all that kind of developments in artificial intelligence. Okay, so that's what we are. Uh, all we are doing is playing with this kind of structure. Of course, it is not as simple as this, but at the, at the, at the, at the bottom, we have these kind of artificial nerves. That's why we call it artificial neural networks. And uh, believe it or not, the first time they had used artificial neural network is 1950 again. Before 1960s, they started working on it. Nowadays, it is working very well for some reason. It didn't work for 50 years. Nowadays, it is working very well. Uh, and uh, they are they are making very good, very, very, very good progress. OK, are there any questions? By the way, these are not very difficult things. When you come to the fourth year, these are some of the things that I did with the uh, uh, fourth year students graduation projects. OK, Mustafa in uh, 2013, he looked at the nuts using the X-ray machine without cracking the nut. He was able to say if it's a good nut or bad nut so that we can sell it for a higher price. I know the grade is this. Later next year, Chef, he did this. He worked with Avelsan. Uh, by looking at the radar outputs of the, 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 the ship itself, can I know where I am uh, in the sea without looking at the GPS? So that's what he did. These are the errors that he's doing. We are still working on this one. Another student in two, 2015 looked at the, where the humans are looking at. At that time, he was one of the best in the world uh, to find the human eyes and etc. Uh, another student a few years ago looked at how we can measure the prostate uh, volume by looking at the ultrasound images. And looking at the prostate volume is very important because Prostate is one of the leading causes of uh, cancer in males, etc. Uh, Mustafa, uh, he has a company right now in our Technopark. He tried to translate 1920 Turkish sentences to 2020 Turkish sentences. This is directly from uh, Nutuk of Mustafa Kemal. Uh, so, okay. Which one is done by the computer? Which one is done by the human? This is one. This is from Mustafa Kemal. Okay. The one of them is from a human, and the other one is from the Mustafa system. By Mustafa, I mean Mustafa Salih. Don't know. Yalnız milletin itimadına haiz bir kabine teşkil etmek için evvela o kabinin istinad edebileceği bir kuvveti vücuda getirmek lazımdır. I think this is the one that uh, that Mustafa produced. Yeah, this human, this is one, okay. So how do we train this? He bought a book, Nutuk, okay. At every page, you have the original and you have the 2020 version. He trained his system using the first 200 pages of that book. And he asked the question from the last 20 pages, okay. And he put the results back to back and we got this. And Mehmet Önder, he came up with the system that designs and produces images of new clothes. These are the design designs from his system. OK, he's from Bursa. His family is doing textile business and he's still doing this. He's, he's making some good money, actually. He's doing some other stuff, too. And last year, Melike did this. Intelligent code editor, OK? If I am writing this code, it is trying to guess what am I, what I am going to write next, okay? So if I say for variable j from zero, then just immediately I am, this is my suggestion. Most of the time it is correct, sometimes it is not. Okay, so just let's make it a little bit more convenient for this one. So 